Hello. So we're going to tie up as promised. I'm going to tie up some flat wings tonight. Um, hold on. All right. So first thing I've got is this happens to be just an Airx streamer. It's an NS110 uh, number six. All right. So the thread I'm using, let me see if I could actually make it so you guys can actually see it too. That's good. Um, so the thread I'm using is, I personally like like a, um, the Uni, or the not the Uni, the Ultra Thread, 70 denier. But everyone who's heard me rant about that knows that I cannot stand it at all. Um, it's right lately it's been wound on like Stevie Wonder winds it on. It's like overlaps itself. It's terrible. It's not even, it's useless. The main thing that you want with flat wings is you want to make sure that you actually have thread that's like a floss kind of so that it'll actually like flatten out. You don't want a round thread or else it's going to take that stem of the feather and it's going to turn it up and you don't want that. So the base that you want at the back is you're going to want some, generally I use bucktail and the reason being is that bucktail is stiffer and you want something that's stiffer than say like bear hair, which is another thing that people could use. Um, because it's gonna actually keep the, foul, the fly itself from fouling. So you don't want that feather to wrap around the hook. So it makes it a little bit easier and um, protects it from doing that, okay? So that's so much crap on my desk right now. Um, we're gonna grab some just standard white bucktail, okay? The perfect bucktail really is something with a little bit of a kink to it. <laughs> kind of like people do. Um, and you want something that's going to be not necessarily super soft, but also not necessarily super <laughs> kinky, I guess. Um, again, there's a joke in there somewhere. So the next thing I always hand stack stuff. I can't, I don't know if you guys can hear me now. Um, I can't actually ever use a hair stacker. Okay just because I really hate using hair stackers. Somebody said they couldn't hear me. Can you hear me now? Can everyone else hear me at least? I'm assuming, hopefully. All right, so what I am doing now, okay, sweet, thank you, um, is hand stacking it. I wanna make it so it's not perfectly even. You don't want it like, like you would with like, if you're gonna tie like a spongier hair or something or other, you don't want that. You want it to be kind of a little bit uneven. You don't want any like super, super long hairs, but you also don't want them completely even across the back. So <clears throat> you wanna make sure that it's not as long as the longest feather you're gonna have in there as well, or the shortest feather either. So you wanna make sure that you're gonna end up having it so that your feathers will still easily get beyond this. I generally start with about a length and a half of the hook shank length. And I take my thumb and I do that just to kind of um, spread it out so that it kind of goes and forms like a dome around the actual hook back so that it will keep that feather from fouling. So the next thing you want is ideally, sorry, as I'm diving down to the floor to get my feathers. I just spread them all out on the floor so that I could see them. <sighs> And it, well, I don't know if it was the best things, but I at least didn't wear a low cut shirt because that would have been disaster. At least, thank God I checked beforehand. Um, so next thing up is ideally you would use a streamer neck because streamer necks are gonna be stiffer and you want it to be concave, okay? This is also the first preventative measure to keep them from fouling. I then pull off all the fuzzy stuff. If I were Ken Abrams, I would take this and I would actually wrap it around my thread and create a pillow. I'm not, so I don't. Um, I also don't actually ever flatten stems. I know that there's times where you should, and there's times that I've done it, and I've been like, eh, kind of worked, I guess, but not necessarily exactly how I wanted it to, so I just haven't done it. So I'm going to put it in and tie it in concave, okay? And I'm going to tie it in right where I pulled off that fuzzy stuff. The key is, is you want to tighten on the upturn and you want to kind of pull and push and pull the stem a little bit just as you do it to keep it from turning. You want to make sure that when you do that, it's not moving. 
when you do that, it's not moving, it's not spinning, great. Now, another step you could do is you can use UV product like Flow from Loon. You could use the Deer Creek, which is what I'm gonna be using. Um, any of the thin or fine UV products, you can add a drop right there and it's gonna actually add some durability to the fly, which is good. It's not gonna keep it from moving the way you want it to. It's just gonna add a little bit of longevity to it. The thing that's tough is that most people add that and think that if their feather's already turning, they put it on there thinking it's gonna save it. It's not. No amount of glue is ever gonna save that feather from turning. So you wanna make sure that you still have it solidified so it's flat before you put this on, okay? So put a drop of that on there. Hit it with the light. Okay. Now, the key with flat wings is to make sure that you have some flash in between every single feather. Um, Kenny Abrams would say, I believe it's two pieces of flash of in between each one. The other key is, is that you want to make sure that you're making it longer. It's going, it needs to be longer than the longest feather you're going to be using. So I kind of have to guess just don't cut it until you're done, okay? Um, so I put a little bit of flash on there. Next, we're gonna do some more here. I've got a bunch of blue saddles. So this, these are all ones I've dyed at home on my own. Um, this one is, as you can see, I don't know if it touched the purple, a purple one I was doing or what happened, but it's got a little bit of a purple hue. I think it adds some personality to it. Um, do as I say, not as I do, and don't actually pull the feathers off until you know exactly that it will work. Otherwise, you're going to waste a lot of feathers, and you'll end up with a drawer full of loose feathers like I have, which weirdly, it started off in a Tupperware container, and then the Tupperware container unknowingly was set on top of the washing machine at one point, and it ended up getting washed, <laughs> so now those feathers are like all messed up not going to happen again. So I'm going to add another drop of this. <clears throat> we don't really have any toothy critters that are going to like seriously chomp on these and make it so that it would beat them up too fast. But I found that we do have barnacles and as amazingly good casters as most of the clients that I take out are, um, the barnacles eat a lot of flies and feathers off of them, so it's good to do this. Let's see here, Britta, what QV care do you use? I end up using the Deer Creek. Um, they have the most variety, and it tends to be one of the most tack-free, I think. I have some of all of the brands, just because I they come in big bottles, I buy them in big bottles, and I have, and they just end up kicking around until I end up using them all up. But I generally speaking, the Deer Creek is the one I use the most. They all smell like crap but they do work. I found the biggest difference is the light. If you have a good light, preferably the one that charges with a USB as opposed to actually having to put batteries in it constantly, it's, that's the deciding factor on it. It should smoke if you actually have it charged well and you have a good enough light and it should set pretty tack free no matter what, as long as you have good enough light. So I wouldn't worry about as much as the brand as much as I would the light. Let's put it that way. So I'm going to next do, <clears throat> we're going to make this a herring. So why not? I'm going to go ahead and do a silver of some sort. There you go. Okay. I'm going to do half that and then I'm going to fold it over. So we'll fold it over. There you go. Okay. And then next, I'm going to do this. Now this is, again, another, some of the best uh, saddles I've ever done have been ones that I've messed up. This wasn't exactly a mess up, but it was a variant that I'd gotten. It was like a bleach job gone bad. <laughs> um, and I went ahead and dyed it. And it turned out pretty cool. I don't know how many herring have really messed up brown spots all over them, but who knows? I think it's cool, so the fish should think it's cool. So now we're gonna do a blue. 
generally a lot of the actual flat wings that you're going to see, the traditional flat wings, you're going to find that they uh, are in or have most of the feathers at the front station, which is the next station up here that we're going to do, as opposed to at the back, which is what I'm doing. However, I don't like doing that because it ends up fouling those more than anything. So I'd rather do one or two feathers with most at the front and do the most at the back. Okay, so now we've got three feathers. Let's keep going, because we can. I'm gonna do more flash. We could do a blue from here. A couple blues. If you're wanting to get a discount on flash, get the kind of the blends got some of each one in there and then you can go ahead and um, use multiple or pick out which one you want as opposed to getting stuck with one of everything and having like a lifetime supply depending on how much you tie okay so next up let's grab another blue why don't we and I'm trying to go from more of a muted like the belly of a fish all the way up to the darker colors so I'm gonna go next with a little bit more of a brighter blue. I believe this is denim blue or sky blue is the dye color. You can tell because I get lazy and I don't really care if the fuzzy stuff gets dyed because I'm not using it anyways. If anyone has dyed feathers, you will know that your entire house smells like poop. Not really poop, but really bad for a while. It smells horrible. Um, the only thing worse is if it, you actually end up with feathers that smell like mothballs and then you dye it that's so gross so next I'm going to put this guy on and he's starting to turn on me this is the fun part too is now you get to play the, the game of guess the stem because you have like five stems sticking out mother of god stay I don't know if I'm going to save this one Pulling. All right. For any of you guys who have watched actually Tiger King, you know um, the language on there does not compete with me when I'm tying flat wings sometimes. And I'm trying to be on my best behavior because I know that, say, my mom could be watching this at some point. So... There you go. There could have been a lot worse language coming out just now, but I got it. We saved it. So let's see here. So there's his butt. It's all done. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead. I left all this crap in here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tie that down until I'm about a quarter of an inch behind the eye. But again, I don't know distance and length well, so it's totally guessing. All right. Now I'm going to go back over here. And I'm gonna do my Legarten. This is the flat braid. I love the colors that they have. They have some really good ones. This is just straight silver because it's in front of my face right now. So um, this is also, uh, let's see here. I do have more teeth than Tiger King. <laughs> then what's his name? I forgot which one it was on there. But the guy, he got more teeth now. I don't know if you guys saw for anyone who's seen it. He did get new teeth apparently recently. The one dude that was, I don't know if he was married to him or not, but anyways, I'll shut up about that. Obviously I had a binge session of watching all that. So I take the flat braid and I actually use it. Bill's body braid, awesome stuff, would totally work too. Um, I take it and I wrap and tighten so that it's actually a third amount like uh, method of locking in these feathers and keeping them from falling out. I've never had one really fall out. I've had them break off, but not really fall out. Hi, avid angler. Um, I learned how to tie these at avid angler when I worked there. Uh, Nathan Keen at the time, the old owner, one of the old owners used to be, he used to, um, teach at the Orvis fly fishing school in the Cape. And he learned from Kenny Abrams how to tie flat wings. 
And I believe he was one of the first, if not the first guy who brought them back and started doing classes in the Northwest. Yeah. Um, and they were all modified for like sea run cutthroat and such. Thanks, Alex. <laughs> um, so it's kind of nice to, to have people that spying on me that also know as much as I do about it. Whether or not he admits it, Avid Angler knows as much, if not more than I do, about tying flat wings. So now that we're here, what we're gonna do is blend up some more hair. So this is where you could bring in other things, okay? Um, certain kinds of bear hair have a, they have a glow to them that you will never, ever, ever get from anything that's not this. Uh, it has, it glistens, it's beautiful. It is almost transparent when held up to sunlight. It's awesome. That said, it's not easy to get. Yes, Steve, you did take one of Nathan's classes. I think I remember that too. Um, the cool thing about bear hair is you can actually blend it with bucktail and end up with a really cool color combo. Um, so I'm gonna take some bucktail. I always cut off weight more than I ever should, but I mean, it could be worse It's a bucktail. Um, and I pull out all the little crap, dump it somewhere on my table or floor, and I end up with another clump bigger than I need. And then, oh, let's take this color too. So this one is, are those the same? They're not. This is like, I just had the bag. I don't know. It's like sky blue or something like that. Again, clump way too big. Um, that. And lastly, why not? We'll do a little purple. Sorry. Don't want to give everyone motion sickness here. I don't know why they do two hairline. Hopefully one day we'll explain this to me, but I think it's maybe be, uh, I don't even know. Lately I've been getting two of them in packages and I don't know why. Um, so we go ahead and pick out the long pieces and now we have this big clump of color. And if you guys are looking for any bear hair, uh, Avid Angler does have legal bear hair. Um, so something to think about. Call Avid Angler. Everyone needs a business right now. Okay. So now we've got this clump that's again way too big for what I need. So I'm gonna go through and pull out a bunch of stuff I don't need in there. And I'm gonna add in a little bit of this. I'm gonna pull off that under fur there. And now it's a good combo. All right. So now what I'm going to do is add this to my, that wasn't a good, <laughs> not blind and I'm not drunk, so I shouldn't have done that. All right. So I'm going to add that there. And again, I'm going to shove it down a little bit just because it's easy and it then kind of surrounds the hook again a little bit. Okay. Is that a chainsaw? Holy crap. You guys can hear that. I have a drunk neighbor named Freddie who lives behind us. He's not always drunk, but I swear he is most of the time, if not on something else, I'm not sure. And he literally, I don't know if he's going to have any yard work or left by the time he's done. He was like up 60 feet up in a tree in a fir or cedar today and like chopping limbs off. People are going crazy inside right now, like super crazy. Justin's cut down half the trees in our yard and then left them in the yard. So now we get to go back out there and try and clean them all up. Anyways, you never know what you gotta do. I get bored and I paint. Justin gets bored and apparently most men decide to chainsaw. So it's what you do. <clears throat> yeah, it's not a chainsaw massacre yet. However, now we need to rent a, um, what is it? The tree, um, one of the, I'm having a brain fart. 
We have to rent one of the things. What the hell is it called? That chops up trees. So, and that thing is the thing that I'm probably going to end up killing myself with. Trust me. So, uh, let's see here. Now I'm going to take, you have two options at this point. Thank you, a chipper. Not so hard. Can't figure out why I couldn't get it. Stump grinder, we don't need yet. We manually did it and broke like five. Um, well, we broke like five rakes as first and then two shovels. So it's, it's been a fun one. Um, so now we also have blackberry bushes that are like, the vines are like that. It's really bad. Drinking and chainsawing is always one more entertaining, I guess. As long as you keep the animals and the kids inside, you're, you're totally safe. So now what you can do is you have two options. This is my typical like uh, guide flat wing. And it's just, I say that because it's the lazy man's flat wing or woman. I don't really care. I'm not that person. Um, but you can either stop here by and add uh, like peacock curl to it. Or we could sit there and we can add a couple more feathers. I'm going to stop here and I'm going to add peacock curl to it so that people don't have to sit here and look at my face and listen to me talk for like another hour so I could still tie another fly and get it in, okay? So, here we go. I'm taking, sure, four pieces. Kinda wanna make them somewhat face the right direction so that they're all pretty and they curve down. I think it's really important to add uh, peacock curl to flies, especially flat wings, just because it gives them a spine, which is really natural on a fish. Um, I'm going to actually lock that down because that's the right thing to do. Tie that off. Now what I'm going to do is you have two options with the throat of it because we need to do that as well. Okay. So you can either do this, which is take the under fur of the bear that you cut and like pulled out. Um, this one, he didn't take very good care of himself. So it, it looks, I'm not going to say what it looks like, but it looks like something not pretty, which I do know one person that got dared into tying a fly with, and it was, um, it was pretty entertaining, so I'm not going to name any names. You may have won a bet or two with it. Uh, he's never going to live it down. Okay. I, um, up in Alaska, we were dared to, to, um, tie a fly or catch a fish on a fly that we, with like just crap that we'd found kicking around. And I ended up winning a thousand bucks by catching a coho on a, don't worry, it wasn't used, but a tampon applicator <laughs> with like a hook strung through it and a, um, a hook on that. It was, it was one of the more entertaining things to watch pop on the surface, but there we go. All right. Supposedly it did, the other one did catch fish too. I don't know. Pink belly, we could do that, but I don't know if I have any pink close by. So you're gonna have to imagine it pink for now. Um, if you wanna add a little bit of excitement to it, you could do ice dub in minnow belly. It's one of my favorite things ever. So we're gonna do that because this polar bear here didn't take good care of itself and it has gross looking hair for the underfur. So what I do is you don't wanna have it too fluffy because it's gonna end up making it want to possibly turn if you don't have a heavy enough or proportionate hook. Um, so I generally take it, I hand stack it for those of you who watched my last podcast or in my last video too, you'll notice I still haven't changed my nails. So I'm sorry. You're never going to get nice nails with from me. I don't think, um, so there we go. What I do is I take it, it's about, it's pretty long fibers anyways. I take it and I place it right there and then I take it and I fold it. and I tie it down, okay? There you go. So now we've got this perfect little bait fish shape. Couple options now as well. We can go with, there it is. Ah, uh, sorry, I don't mean to do that to everybody. There we go. Okay, so we could do jungle cock, um, which it works well. You can still buy it legally as well. Um, depends on what country it's going to ship from. So you got to watch that. Um, the annoyance is, is I'm out of a lot of the good sizes on this. The reason I use jungle cock versus bait fish eyes on certain flies is they make them like sand eels and things like that. You want them to be really, really streamlined. 
and it looks better. I think they fish way better with jungle cock on them. That said, for something like a little herring like this, I'm gonna go ahead and use standard 3D eyes because again, I don't really have good sizes on the jungle hawk and it's not necessary on herring, so why waste it? So, not, don't get me wrong though, they do look good on herring. Just not on this herring. So I'm gonna whip finish. Use my favorite tool in the history of mankind. Cauterizer. <laughs> smells so bad. Um, All right, next up, eyes. Do I ever use all black eyes? I have. You know, actually the last one that I think that had really good uh, mostly black eyes was uh, Clear Cure Goo, I think it was. They had that one that was in Raven that I was obsessed with. It was the coolest eye ever. And then those guys went out of business and it really sucked because I really loved that eye. Um, that said, now these guys are just the fly, the fish skull or flymen uh, living eyes. These are going to be F if you're ordering from your hairline. It's I believe this is 5LE1. No, 5LE4. So it's size 5, living eyes 4 is the code. Which is sad that I've memorized all of those. Okay, so there's the eyes on that. My phone's being weird. There we go. Um, now what I'm going to do is add some UV to it. I'm just putting in a drop over the top between the eyes. This is just gonna lock them in. It's apparently gonna blow a bubble too. Now I'm gonna take my light and hit it with the light. I missed something with this. It's gonna drive me nuts. There we go. I'm not a perfectionist. God, that smells so bad. But um, every once in a while I get really annoyed with certain stuff like little fuzzes coming off. Ah, oh, mother crap. <laughs> there we go. All right, so now that's, we got that set. So now what I'll do is I'll go back over it and I'll fill in the head a little bit more and I will take it and I'll add then like Sally Hansen's over it because you want to make sure that you just add a little bit more of a glossy finish to keep it from like hooking onto like seaweed and kelp and crap like that, but also make it so that as more sun hits it, it doesn't end up yellowing over time. So there we go. Now what you would also do is you would take your flashaboo and you would cut it. You want it about, I like it about an inch longer than the longest feather. This already is, so it worked out fine. But 